when you're adjusting your machine to run properly, basically you want to make sure that you have your machine completely set up with a tube and a needle in there. And you can use a little cup of water, or if you want to use a little bit of ink so that it has a thicker consistency, you can. On your rear binding post here, you have a little contact adjustment and a little, a little tightening screw that allows you to move this part back and forth, your little contact screw. Basically, this contact screw adjustment comes away from the spring and goes to the spring, so you're basically opening or closing this little gap here between your front spring and the contact point. And this, a lot of, a lot of the newer power supplies have basically a voltmeter. The better power supplies have this little readout here that tells you exactly what your machine is doing so that you can tune it properly. A lot of your, uh, a lot of your adjust, main adjustments will just happen with this, but you can also, by bending your springs a little bit, you can adjust the pressure that's coming back towards your contact point. And there's gauges for that kind of thing too, but a lot of people just kind of do it by feel. So basically, by adjusting this screw, what I'm going for is between 110 and 120 cycles, cycles per minute. And then the duty cycle, you want it to be 50%, which means that your springs are basically moving in even distance and pressure in both directions. And I've got it at 8.5 volts, which is less than a little 9-volt battery, so there's not a lot of power coming into it. That not only makes it do less damage to the skin, but it feels better to the person. The more power you're running into your machine, the harder the machine's hitting them, and typically the more pain they're, they're feeling. And the little follow-through there at zero means that the little contact point is, basically the machine is operating at optimum efficiency. So this little, uh, this little contact adjustment is, your, is going to be your initial, your initial adjustment. But the other consideration is the little rubber bands that hold, uh, hold the needle bar in place. If you have too many that are too tight, it can create too much friction in the bottom of the, bottom of the front of the tube. Also, making sure that your machine is put together properly and that the needle bar is actually traveling through the center of the tube. Sometimes if it's rubbing on the top or the bottom of the tube, that can create fr friction that'll make your machine not run properly. So sometimes you might need to put on more rubber bands to get the, get the needle to travel through the center of it if it's just barely off. Or you can just uh, sometimes uh, you know, take off this little or loosen this little screw and Typically, the spring either has a little notch in it or kind of a bigger hole so that you can, you know, scoot the, scoot the spring around one way or the other. And that'll make it so that your needle bar is traveling through the center of the tube. Also, making sure that your, your needle bar is sitting in there properly. The needle should be sitting on the bottom of the tube. So they're riding along the bottom. So the bar, where it's soldered on, the bar is sitting on top of the needles. Another adjustment that you can make too is by the power, depending upon the area and the result, you might need to turn your power up or down. Some areas that are a little bit more fragile on an arm, typically as you get up towards somebody's armpit, the skin is a little bit more flexible and bouncier and so sometimes if you try to crank your power up to get it in there rather than achieving a proper stretch and turning your machine down actually can help create a better result.